All right, folks. Hello and welcome back to Downstage Gaming. I'm your host, Josh, and this is part 32 of our Let's Play of Head as Code. When we last left off, we're in what I believe to be the final ending here. We've entered the code into the secret room, and uh, inside, E freaked out, took off her face thing. She didn't have a face. We, we learned some philosophy stuff about nomadics and, and whatnot, and then we let Emily out of the tube here, and we're about to learn some things, I believe, from Emily. Uh, Emily is obviously an older E. I'm sure you have read my notes in my diary. Sneaky boy. I nodded, remaining silent, unsure of what I should have said, if anything. Instead, I let her talk to avoid her getting confused getting confused in her explanations. It is your final chance to think about everything before I say my piece, so take it now or proceed. I will let you choose the order in which I explain it all. All right. Emily explains it all in whatever order I please. I can talk about myself or about you, the other participants, and then I'll finish up with this entire events ordeal. I quickly made up my mind on what we talk about first. I, I mean, we're going to get a chance to talk about all of this, I assume. So let's, let's talk about you first, Emily, because this clearly starts with you. I want to know more about you. Oh, ho, ho, ho. such a thing pleases me greatly. Although I suppose it was preordained, I would eventually talk about me, my motivation, and why I am smiley. Though I suppose that is incorrect. Without S, I am only Miley, or Emily. It is our connection that created this entire thing, after all. It is because I was stupid. I wanted everything. I was greedy. I used to be a normal person, as normal as I could force myself to be, and I used to frequent the University of Montreal so long ago now. I studied in Applied Nomadics, which allowed me to manipulate thoughts and such. Yes, that diary is mine. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you a lot about that, but I can give context. The organization that contacted me is called the Empty S. Okay, so this is the thing that Marco said he was a part of. They are horrible, horrible people who do human experiments. So this is also probably the organization that experimented on Hannah. I had no idea what I'd gotten myself into for the longest time. So I worked for them. I built various technological advances while furthering my studies. One day, I met you, Simon. You did not see me, and in fact, you never even so much as looked at me. But as I said, I wasn't normal. I don't have feelings. I wanted them, but I never had them. I was not good with human relations in general, so I never felt compelled to approach. I was fine just looking from afar. Unfortunately, that was a mistake, as was continuing work with the MDS, mind you. Eventually, they wanted to host this event, and I was the best candidate for it. And so, I became Smiley. I learned you, of all people, would be participating in it. And so, I wanted to save you. I wanted to save you, and I also wanted to create an unbreakable bond between us. Such an experience would be something no other people could ever share. Listen, I get it, you know? You, 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 you love somebody, you, you, you develop these feelings but I get the feeling we might have gone a little far here, Emily. I wanted to create it. I wanted to create love. I wanted it to no longer be so unrequited. I didn't know how to take this. Was this some sort of weird declaration of love from an old woman? Well, perhaps it was a little too prejudiced to think badly of it, but I wanted to stop it, but I couldn't. So instead, I tried creating loopholes and a way out, because if it weren't, wasn't for me, everyone would have died, executed, as part of the process. Even though I failed. Hopefully, you can find it in you to forgive me. We'll see about that. I took a pause before we continued talking. Alright, what about everyone else? 
Yeah, I have a question about that. Why us? Why choose all of us? Oh, this is a little complicated. First of all, you need to understand that we chose our subjects very carefully. Makes sense. I suppose I can go in order of number. G, as you called her, was chosen simply because she came as a pair with her twin, Hannah. But she also had been involved in the replacement of her sister under observation. You were chosen because somehow the empty S was aware of my attraction to you. They didn't want me to start doing something stupid, so they chose you as some sort of punishment or point of focus for me. I never wanted you to have been chosen. Let me establish that. I, you know, somehow that doesn't make me feel better. If I had gotten my way, none of this would have happened. Marco was chosen because he was also a student in applied nomadics, but he knew of the MDS the same way I knew of them, and he was opposed to what they were doing. Okay. He was dangerous, they said. I don't see it. Agnos was chosen because he had betrayed them before. The MTS held an experiment in which his wife was killed, and as a result, he defected, only to reintegrate the ranks. However, he no longer held the esteemed position he once had. Instead, he became part of the cleanup crew. After the debacle in New York, he was reassigned here, but unbeknownst to him, he was to be killed off in this place. Hana was chosen because she is one of the very first Gamma X... Gamma X Machinas, or Gems, which I renamed Emily's. She was used in an experiment to measure the link between twins. G never learned her sister was a fake. Ray was chosen because he got too close to the MTS. He took a brain scan somewhere, then the MTS contacted him to help him with some sort of cure. I don't know any of the details beyond this much, but that was apparently enough for them. Maybe the medicine he had was experimental in some way. Maybe it causes him to shoot people when he doesn't necessarily want to. Myself? Well, it should be obvious. I looked at the motionless body. So, you controlled your Emily remotely? Oh, no, no, no. This was quite literally me. Remember, they are autonomous, Simon. Anyway, finally, Jasmine. Obviously, she isn't the real Jasmine. It was another half-failed experiment where they turned someone into a completely different person. Hannah, the real one, was heavily injected and rebuilt to become Jasmine herself. That one I had no hand in. It seems very atrocious. She closed her fists, somewhat angry. I shared the same emotion, but it was also liberating? Yes, this meant the real Jasmine was still fine. Of course, I already remembered this. Anyway, about this experiment... She took a brief pause and gave me the opportunity to glance over at E. Was she never to move again? My thoughts were interrupted when Emily spoke anew. On April 22nd, 2022, all eight of us were prepared and brought to this underground facility. They internally call it the Tower of Rebirth, even if it is deep below the surface. The goal was simple. Create a situation that would bring an external observer to this world and retroactively give birth to it. Okay. Alright, so I'm understanding that that's relating to the thing that they talked about in the book that we read last time, the journal that we read, that if an effect is observed, then all possible causes that could cause that effect also happen. I'm not quite sure what exactly this means in the specifics, though. As you have no doubt browsed my notes, you must be aware of the perception of existence. By bringing an outside observer, or God, as the MDS calls it, then, okay, and this relates to what Marco was talking about that one time, then we would create this world by retroactively bringing every element needed for its construction. That is the Anthropic Principle. It says that the world is as it is now, because if it wasn't, then it wouldn't be. That means a necessary component for this world to exist was for this experiment to take place. Okay. 
So, if I'm understanding this correctly, at some point, somebody observed, some external force observed that this happened, and so now it needed to happen. Hold up, what? This doesn't make any sense. It is a reverse cause to effect. By creating the effect, which was this experiment, we gave birth to the world, which was the cause leading up to it. But that's not how it works. You need the cause to make the effect happen. Do you? If you have the effect, then the cause is a necessary element for it to happen. Well, whatever. I'm getting confused. Please continue. Right. I'll leave the specifics to theory crafters. So anyway, in this experiment, everyone was adorned with a collar. They are what had been selected to be the transmitters. Those collars contain every single bit of the memory you remember. So these contain the, the, the memories of the original person. When affixed to a human body, they transmit false memories, such as you being in the Metro with Jasmine and Marco. That was a fake memory being transmitted to your brain every time you woke up, at the very beginning, alongside Jasmine. In the same order of idea, fake memories had been transmitted to everyone before they woke up, too. For instance, Marco's opposition to the MDS was suppressed, and instead he started sharing in that doctrine. He inexplicably believed in God. Agnos was given the knowledge to create explosive, as before he'd only used pre-made ones. Hana forgot her school life, and those memories were falsified, which really changed how she remembered her time there. She forgot her entire circle of friends. I was made to forget I was the mastermind behind all of this. That was a grave problem, and it ultimately led to carnage. I wish I could take it back so badly. Either way, the collars functioned well, but they were imperfect. Thankfully, it played into my hand until Agnos decided to destroy everything. I still can't fathom what went through his head. The colors are not stable, which may explain why he behaved like that. When they create conflicts in the mind, they can grow like a mental tumor that erodes your sanity. You may have seen this happen a few times, <laughs> and perhaps also been subjected to it when memories did not match up with what you previously thought you saw. Right, that time with Jasmine. No, those times. It happened more than once. Precisely. The carnage that followed sadly robbed every person of their lives, including you. You were beheaded. I still, to this day, have a vivid memory of that moment, and it haunts my nightmares. Following your beheading, I had no choice. I remade it all. I squinted in suspicion. What did she mean by that? It took me many, many, many years. In fact, if I am this old, it is because I have spent my whole life researching in the field of nomadics until I could create exact, perfect replicas of a human. Of course, their interior is still robotic, as if they are strange, fleshy robot hybrids, but these are the Emilies you see now. Okay, so if I'm understanding this correctly, what she's saying is that that first timeline that we went through ending with us getting beheaded in the elevator as we tried to escape that was the that was real <laughs> in that that was our real bodies and then after that emily here in order to help us save us uh went ahead and started making these remade the experiment using robots or clones or whatever emily's i suppose she motioned towards e I recreated all eight of you to rebuild the memories of this place. For your particular case, I used your head as code. Head as code! We did it, folks! But... but why? It's simple, Simon. I wanted to see you again. Can you fault me? I wanted to see you again. I wanted you to forgive me. I wanted to absolve myself, but I never managed to replicate you perfectly. The you who had gone through the first one, the one I called Ending A, 
The one that got beheaded. The one that saved me. The one that was so courageous despite it all. Currently, we are in ending S. I wanted to give you another chance. Alas, that had been the goal at first, but the empty S collapsed shortly after Agnos destroyed the Metro. So Agnos succeeded. Congratulations to Agnos. Mission accomplished. It was impossible to bury the event, and the police arrested everyone and dismantled everything. But I was never found. I was declared legally dead, along with all of us, who were buried in the tower's complete wreckage. But I... I had time. And so I spent my entire life researching nomadics here, rebuilding this entire place. I do not intend to hide my crimes. However, you have to also understand. She looked at her hands for a moment. I didn't have a choice either. This needed a happy ending, somehow. God wouldn't let me. What do you mean? Remember when I said that the effects can be created before the cause? It's like that. God is here. God is watching us. God is tricking me into making more and more. But just like God is tricking me, I am tricking God. This entire time, the fact it was a repeated event, the fact it looked like you were making choices, the fact it was all built this way. I made slight modifications and recalibrations to your brain and to others' brains to hopefully reach this ending A again. But it was never quite right, so I needed more time. I made it look like everything was just one path that changed based on what you believed. In reality, I was tricking God because I needed more time. Are we God? <laughs> That's a question I didn't think I'd be asking today. Are we God? It seems like it. Just as God tricked me because God wanted to see the true end. Yes, okay, yep. Okay, I'm not sure how comfortable I am with this, but all right. I had to program all of these choices in your head. And when you felt like something wasn't exactly your choice, it's because I had to change your beliefs to try and attain that ending again. But anyway, I failed. I didn't manage to do it. As evidenced by your presence here, and the fact that I am now opening my heart, I have failed. Still, I do have more to say about this. This woman was insane. I couldn't believe what she was explaining to me. God? Choices? Calibration? My head used as code? Code for what? Myself? Most likely. Okay, hold on. This is a, a joke, right? This doesn't make any sense. It does, Simon. Many people believe the world works in timelines. That out there, there is another timeline where everyone is happier or worse off. It is comforting, comforting to know that you are not doing so bad after all. The truth is that there has never been concrete proof of that. The fact I have repeated this event not once, not twice, but 18 times now is proof of the opposite. And I, stuck in this place, am the monkey eternally typing on the strings of fate to replicate an event that shouldn't have existed in the first place. And do you know what that makes it? No, I don't know. You know about Schrodinger's cat, right? The thing that Jasmine kept saying weirdly for some reason? You can't know the outcome until it is witnessed. Well, imagine the reverse. What if you were in the box? What if you died? You wouldn't be able to see the outcome, right? But the outcome existed. God witnessing this moment means that the effect exists, and so... I couldn't have died because I wanted to be the one God watched everything through. An observer outside of our enclosed universe would only see the world when a good ending had been reached, so I couldn't die. That is why I blindfolded myself. I cut off my hearing. I had minimal senses. Because... If I removed it all, then the only thing God could witness was the absolute good end. The ending I was yearning for. The ending in which you were alive, I was alive, 
in which we integrated society, left all of this behind us, and lived happily together. Because I loved you, Simon. But I suppose this doesn't matter now. In the end, I fucked up. She cringed as she swore, as if it was difficult for her. For whatever reason I could hardly understand, God chose to witness this world through you. Why? I don't know. Listen, I would have happily taken E as a protagonist. It would have been a weird would have been a weird thing to do given that you chose to blind and deafen yourself, but But because that was the case, all of that setup was for naught. And so the vision from inside the box always leads to two outcomes. Just as the cat dies or lives, and how both outcomes exist, there is quantum suicide and quantum immortality. I was not allowed to die, because there had to be more story. There had to be more of this to reach this point. Do you understand better now? Not really. <laughs> this is getting pretty meta. I don't want to downplay your explanations, but this is impossible to prove. This god business, this witnessing that, the anthropomorphic principle, whatever this all is, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. But it does, Simon. This is how the world works, and I hate it, and I'm sure you hate it too. Then explain to me how and where we were remade 18 fucking times. The reactor. You've witnessed it once, haven't you? The reactor contains all of you. All of your Emily is slowly maturing over 12 years. Every time, every attempt to replicate ending A, you were matured over 12 years. 12 years? Okay, so this might do some more to help explain why sometimes things are very different in the outside world. Yes. It is a long and laborious process. These are the latest version of Emily's, and they are the most sophisticated of the lot. They are not alpha prototypes or beta constructs. They are full and complex. Wait, 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 wait. So, t 12 years. I'll save you the maths. 12 times 18, but also I have to add the lifetime of research I needed. I felt sick. How much, how much time had passed since ending A? It has been 288 years since you first woke up in the Metro, Simon. This is the year 2310. Almost 300 years had passed since I first woke up. Instantly, I felt defeated. Despair ran through my body as I took in that information. Everyone, everyone I knew was gone. I fell down to my knees and then onto my hands, too. I couldn't handle the truth. The world became a twisted swirl of nothingness. Everyone I knew was gone forever. I would never see them again. The real Jasmine was dead. Marco was dead from ending A too. The real us, even the real me. Everyone's dead. This is just a mockery of life. No. This is life, Simon. This is our life. Androids and humans. Oh, bullshit! Androids can be their own selves. I'm just myself. I'm not myself. I'm myself, but not myself. I'm not myself. I'm a copy. I'm not me. I looked at my hands and clenched my teeth. The old woman delicately reached forward to grab one of them and pull me up to my feet again. I think we should go see something. Come with me. I felt so defeated. I didn't even protest. The old woman guided me out. I lost track of where we went after that. We fetched a key with a loop that looked like the number 8 from Agnos's immobile body. He had been turned off from the machine. That's how I knew. What Emily said was true. I was... an android. I knew that already, didn't I? That's why when I died, I was turned off and there was darkness. I had died 18 times. No, wait. That wasn't true, was it? My sight came back to me as I rectified my posture. We died once. We were in the elevator going upwards. Hold on, Emily. I haven't died every time, have I? We're almost there. And what about you? 
How are you still alive after 300 years have passed? 288 years, to be exact, Simon. There are multiple types of vats, not just ones used to grow Emily's. I have remained alive because I have kept myself in suspension within that vat in the special laboratory storage room. Thankfully, I still had Beta Emily's to use to repair, rebuild, and reorganize this place automatically every time. In the theater, those robots you touched, they were an army of very early prototypes. Oh, that's creepy. They were the ones who did most of the work. But a lot of them eventually failed, and I had to keep newer versions. That is why you may have seen a twin without their collar in the security room. Wait, why did she not have a collar, though? It is because the collars have your entire personality, Simon. Your memories are constantly being broadcasted to your body. As an Emily, without those, you are no better than a robot without any thought. An automaton. So, I'm... I touched the collar. This... This thing I wore that could kill me, that could end me, was me. When I was beheaded then, I didn't die because my head was cut off. It was because the collar shut down. That's why when someone died, we could take them off. The collars were shut down. I clenched my teeth. Why did everything make sense? I wish... I wished it didn't, because if it didn't make sense, then there could have been a nightmare I could have woken up from. But this was no nightmare. I wouldn't wake up from it. This was real. The elevator stopped. We left it and walked out into darkness. After a long walk, we emerged outside. I understood why Emily was so insistent for me to come outside following the question of my deaths. Outside was calm. It was an island. Deserted, no doubt, but not too deserted, as in the distance I could spy some kind of house. It was entirely made of wood and looked like a comical log cabin. What is this? This is what Simon 17 and Emily 17 have made, Simon. Simon 17? Yo, okay. So I, I nailed it in terms of, I mean, we got that one bad end in between there. But the last good ending that I got was 17, and this is 18, I think, right? Your other self, the one who had escaped before. He has done so by confronting Agnos and pulling Emily along with him to pass through one of the scanner gates. You have managed to escape twice during this entire ordeal. Once, you did so, but you arrived in a ruined world around a hundred years after ending A. Then, you escaped again, this time on this island, 24 years ago. Alas, if it was so easy to accept that as the right ending. But it wasn't the right replicated path. Yet I came to understand from it that it might be the closest one to what I needed. And so, I decided to shut down the experiment to prepare the duo for my speech, as I planned to tell them at that exact time. But first, I had to do modifications. I took Emily 17 back in, installed eyes and ears upon her head, and... Oh, right, why did you do that? Why couldn't you leave your other self their senses? Because if I did, then there would be no difference. You know how the endings work, right? When I end the experiment, it takes all the events that happened and assigns it a letter. As much as I wanted to replicate you exactly as you were, I couldn't. Because if I did the exact same setup, then God would end up in ending A all over again. Which results in your death and my unfortunate survival. Despite that, I replicated everything as best I could have. The guns, the knife, the rooms, everything was put back as it should have been as long as I could do so. Your little trick hit a gun away for the longest time and I never ever found that gun again until you took it out. I decided that one gun would have been fine anyway. I made a major change to separate every experiment from this one by removing my own senses, since I wasn't using them during the experiments. In the distance, I saw myself. That was Simon 17. Next to him was a girl, Emily 17. What the? Hey, Emily, look at this. My other self called from afar. I stared over, almost longingly, at the happier life he seemed to be leading with Emily 17. I was jealous of myself. 
The two of them joined us after rushing over. Simon17 seemed all the more surprised not only seeing me, but also seeing Emily, too. I didn't think I'd see you again. I was just showing Simon19 around here. Oh, we're Simon19. Okay. Here yeah, for a bit. Simon19. So this has gone on again for another two experiments. You said you'd stop everything, didn't you? But then we didn't see you again. Yes, I said that, but I had to change my mind because... Because what? I had to know. No matter. Either way, I was just showing Simon19 around. Do you have anything you want to say to each other? Well, just that, as you can see, there's not much left of Montreal. He motioned with his arms around. Apparently a flood took the world by storm, and due to global warming, everything is now underwater. It's a real Wind Waker situation. This is the very top of Mont Royal, the mountain in the middle of Montreal. And so it goes. Sorry, I'll avoid being a defeatist again. It's okay. I'm still coming to terms with everything that has happened. It's very hard to imagine I have ever spoken with myself. Yourself from 24 years in the future, too. You guys, you look, you don't look a day past whatever you started as. A lot of time has passed, huh? And yet you're barely aged. Okay, well, at least we're acknowledging that. <laughs> Emily was looking at us. That is because Emily's age very, very slowly. It was one of the main parts of the GEM project. Gamma X Machinas were supposed to withstand dozens upon dozens of years of de deterioration. I estimate Emily's lifespans to be somewhere in the range of two to three hundred years. Plenty of time to get this island under control. <laughs> oh, don't say it like that. Either way, our business is more or less concluded here. Hmm. <laughs> We're going back in? Yes. I'd like to stay here too, but this seems to be our doubles paradise, so I don't want to intrude. And besides, I belong to another era. Before we go, I have a question. This time, Emily17 was the one who wanted to take it. What is it? Are you two happy? Yes. We are as carefree as the wind. Even if it's just been one long dream. We don't really need to eat, but we do have to do maintenance, and it's not always pleasant. And so long as you continue living here, none will disturb you. It is, as I say, paradise, even if it will probably end someday. We waved to each other. This lifted my spirits, to be honest. I was a little happier, despite the horrible situation everyone went through. Then, after our goodbyes were given, we went back underground. Emily had one last thing to talk to me about before... Before what? I didn't know what would come after yet. So here we stand. The experiment hasn't really succeeded, and I know I'm too old to continue. I will definitely expire soon, and not even God witnessing the world can stop that now. I don't have a lot of these attempts left in me, but I still have enough to repeat the experiment again. What? Why would you do that? So more people can die? A flash of a thought passed me by. Not only that, but I clearly remember Jasmine and Hannah escaping together before. They left the underground, no? Their collars made nine together. That meant they could have passed the scanner gate. Yet I hadn't seen them on the surface. Don't get me wrong, Simon. I am willing to leave Simon17 and Emily17 their paradise, but I am not done here. The experiment needs to replicate the exact way it should have. And did anyone else make it out then? The experiment I replicated was made to let us both escape, and no one else as the original experiment did. I felt a cold touch on my back. That meant Jasmine and Hannah, when they escaped, they didn't all of that and they weren't allowed this paradise why did you not change that why was it that that you only changed E's senses i couldn't risk it i couldn't let left i i even left many hints that our two collars would let us get out to ensure we would be the ones to make it there was a puzzle in the infirmary that was blue and red what does that have to do with anything was supposed to illustrate the combination of two to make a third thing. 
Do you remember this special note and what it said? It was, none smile within my mask, and it was not a mistake. It is an anagram. It says, Simon and Emily makes nine. Okay. Nobody's going to decipher that. But the trail was there, Simon. Either way, you lack the memories that make up, Simon. You need to be restored to your exact self from ending A. So I will let you be activated for a while longer to make peace with your situation. Then I will launch the automated program and have the old Emily's restore this place for Simon 20 to go. I can't. No. You're wrong about this. I can't do that. I can't repeat this cycle of death. She smiled sadly. Don't worry, Simon 19. I will be in suspension for 12 years. You will be allowed to undertake the experiment again until you are restored to your real self. I'm myself right now. I remember it. I remember the collapse. I remember the elevator falling and me dying. And you know what? I pointed at her accusingly. Because of what you did, I remember more too. I remember when I died after Agnos killed you. I remember when I died after uncovering the vats in the reactor. I remember... I remember everything. Every single death. I remember all of them. All of this pain, all this suffering. I remember everything you put me through. Memories make the person. I'm more myself than I could ever be because I went through this bullshit close to 20 times and I remember all of it. That... that can't be possible. Memories shouldn't transfer across attempts like that. It makes you complete, but also very strange. Suddenly she lit up as if she figured something out. I see, so that's how it is. Because God is using you as a vessel. God is actually transporting the memories, the information. Is this something that can happen? I never even considered that. It would have saved so much, so much trouble. She sighed, looking older than ever, and decidedly apologetic about the situation. I cannot undo those. But I suppose, perhaps it is time then. She looked more solemn all of a sudden. You sacrificed yourself to save an idiotic girl almost 300 years ago, and for that I will eternally be grateful you chose to do so on your own. I am old, I am tired, I have changed so much. And yet I still yearn for your forgiveness. All I work towards now is to finally die in peace. To let go of everything on one final note. Will you forgive my mistakes? My lies? Will you forgive me? Well, this, this isn't going to matter to her because it's God choosing. Something tugged at my head. I didn't care. This was my decision. God or whatever the fuck you are. Yeah, that's right, Simon. Tell me off. This was mine and not yours and not anyone else's. It wasn't programmed by Emily. It was mine. I can't. I can't forgive you. After all that suffering, only my other self is allowed to have a happy end. And out of all of us, just one. One Emily. One. I can't forgive that. The twins, Hannah and her sister... What of them and their future? Emily froze, visibly struggling with her inner demons. She waited for a few moments, closed her eyes, and exhaled. I had never seen her this tired before. I see. Very well, then. If that is your choice... She walked out of the lobby. Hey, where are you going? I followed after her. I will go back to the vats and restart everything as I was planning to do. What? Why? You can't accept my choice? I will do it until one of you forgives me. I... I have sacrificed far too much for this to fail. For this to end that way. I will repeat it until one of you finally grants me peace. Wait, is that why? I remembered my other self's words. She said she would have stopped 24 years ago, and yet here we were. Was this because... Did my other self also decide not to forgive you? Yes. It is too much. To toil so hard my entire life. So you can't accept it then. You you can't accept my choice. 
Not God's choice, not your choice, or whatever the fuck. It's mine, and you can't accept it. And you still call yourself worthy of forgiveness? What are you going to do about it? You're a machine. You are bound by the laws of robotics and cannot stop me if I choose to continue. Now I know what I have to reprogram next time. This is the choice I have to redo. I will give you an option here, and then you will pick forgiveness. After all of this, after this entire experiment, to not be forgiven, forgiven for this story to not have a happy ending on some degree, I cannot bear it. She suddenly coughed and fell down to the ground. I hesitated, unsure of what she was playing at, until I realized she truly couldn't get back up. I at least helped her sit up against the wall so we could be on eye level. I can't... I can't make it anymore. I am too old. I will break down very soon. I couldn't do it in the end. I failed, and now I will end. Please, bring me to the vet. I can't do this, Emily. I can't let you do this. I won't let you redo this, Emily. There was a light strain on me, as if my program was trying to make me obey the law of robotics. By inaction, I would invoke pain upon her. It's over. You can't rest now. You can rest now. Sorry. <laughs> I can't forgive you, but I won't let this happen. All I wanted in the end was to get your forgiveness. Can't you let me go in peace? Please, grant me this one final thing. The more she asked me to forgive her, the more I couldn't. I still remembered Hannah and Jasmine, and their struggles, and my struggles. I remember how she continued, despite giving my precious self a happy end, just because he couldn't bring himself to forgive her. Everyone was still dead as well. Jasmine might have died of old age, wondering her whole life where I disappeared to. I could never have brought her any news. Emily had also dragged Marco into this mess, and he died due to her, due to her too. But it had been close to 300 years. This old woman, this lunatic, was she really E? So much time has passed since ending A. You've changed a lot. You became someone else entirely. For the sin of repeating this for your own greed, I can't forgive you. But because your younger self still tried to do as she could despite the organization's looming presence, she almost succeeded at at least saving me. I will forgive you, the you from 288 years ago. I will forgive E. She gave a weak smile, and yet it was enough to make her look so much younger. At that moment, I felt like I was with the girl I saved, with E. That's good enough. I spent my entire life to atone for this moment, and now... It is you. It is your choice. What happens with this place? Maybe I was mistaken, but I... She coughed again, her eyes widening in surprise. She tried to say something else, but she couldn't. Instead, she lifted her hand and did her best to reach my face. Before she managed to touch it, she fell back down. Immobile. Dead. Emily had drawn her last breath, and now it was over. I remained there with her lifeless body for a long time. I didn't know what to think. I didn't want to disturb the couple on the surface, as I, too, in a way, wanted to have a happy ending. But a happy ending was also a fake one. The 24 years they spent together was their paradise, as Emily put it. It was also a long dream, and if they had to wake up from it, then so be it. I went back up the stairs. I told them all about the fact something might happen soon. To be ready, just in case they had to bunker up. The both of them understood, even if I didn't tell them the specifics. I didn't even tell them Emily died, either. They were wiser than I anticipated. They accepted that this could be the end. Once those preparations were complete, I went back underground. I wandered to the laboratory storage. I took E's collar with me and I reactivated it. Away from her body, it didn't wake her up. <clears throat> I wanted to carry what had E in it, and so I took it with me. Armed with E's collar, I reactivated the reactor room and carried Emily, the old woman's body, inside with me. 
Since I carry E's collar with me, the door shut behind me when I entered the room. I climbed up the stairs and sat on the ground with E's collar and Emily's body next to me. And then I waited. Smiley appeared to me. I see you arrived at this room. Unfortunately, I must inform you that this room is a dead end, in a manner of speaking. It will not be one for everyone, however. Before I explain that part, I will tell you a story. It is directly cor correlating to some of your presences here. There was a girl who had done terrible things a long time ago. She, as a result, was taken by an organization for their human experiments. What she did was terrible, but what those people did was even worse. The girl's sins were to join them, looking for both fortune and a stable life. But the biggest sin of all was how she remained closed off, unable to communicate with others clearly. She was entirely deaf to the plight of her own feelings and blind to the feelings of others. So when we first did this bit the first time, I had assumed that this was about Hannah, but this is actually about E. This situation is a direct result of that. And now, this is the reason why this room is a dead end. The reactor has been set to overheat within 10 minutes. Make no mistakes, this reactor could completely destroy every station here. It is an extremely powerful power generator that, on its own, could give energy to the entire city. While it is not nuclear energy, it is something somewhat close. Anyone can stop it by pushing a button to close the reactor. It is sad to point out, but the button is inside a contraption, and pressing it will close the door behind that person. This means that whoever pushes the button will be trapped within while it stabilizes, resulting in their end. The only question you both should be thinking about for the next 10 minutes is, who will make the sacrifice? This time, there would be no sacrifice. Where before I had died, where before Hannah had died, and where most likely countless Marcos, Jasmines, and others had died too, I waited. I watched as the screen turned off and the minutes counted down. The reactor was activating. I could have stepped in to die and stop it. I didn't. Did I think there would be no sacrifice? Oh no. There would be a sacrifice. In fact, there would be three sacrifices. Emily and I would be the sacrifices, along with her younger, more naive self. Together, all three of us would be here when it ended. I closed my eyes, awaiting my fate in utter darkness. One final time. What do you think, God? Am I alive or dead? Are you alive or dead? Simon's long trip from ending 8S has finally reached its conclusion, and now God can also rest with a true ending. <laughs> Yay! Oh, man. Jesus. <laughs> okay, I mean... Th specifically, the thing that I think I'm the most... The, the thing that I'm most interested in is the, the meta way of us being God here. Uh, I And that really does, as, as much as I, uh, during some parts in the middle, felt like I didn't quite like the decision for that first time through for there to be no choices. Now, having a full understanding of why that is the case, that's pretty good. And I do like that quite a bit. Having that be the canonical original thing and then having us come in and make those choices to start interfering with things. I do like that quite a bit. I am curious what the uh, what the spoiler here was in. I, I wasn't looking at the credits too much. Huh. You can definitely I feel, I feel like that was a good um I feel like Emily was a good mastermind of that, like, you understand her motivations. You understand why she did what she did. She's sympathetic to a degree, and yet you still ultimately come away from it being like, nah, what you, what you did was wrong. Alright, well let's just, 
Let's just make sure here. Well, now that's interesting. Huh. Why, why the box? I mean, I, I get that all of the letters come out, except for S and this bit. That's weird. Huh. All right, well, folks. And now we get, I don't understand. Oh, it's because S, uh, I get it, okay. Well, folks, that's gonna do it then for Head as Code. Now this is, uh, as I said at the very beginning, this is a trilogy. Um, while this one seems to wrap up pretty well on its own, I know that there are two other games that come into this. Uh, I believe the next one is like Birth, Birth Me Code or something like that. Um, and the third one is not yet out yet, but it's supposed to come out by the end of this year. So I'm probably gonna take a small break uh, get into some something else, something different for a little bit. Uh, but soon enough, I will definitely play the sequel to this one. Uh, because this has been a very fun ride. I very much enjoyed my time here with this one. Uh, despite the fact that I really would... I, I, I do wish that we could actually have done the escape rooms. That, that would be my one big complaint. Is like, I would like to have actually done the puzzles. But other than that, I had a great time. So we will definitely come back to that sequel uh, sometime soon. Until then, though, folks, this has been Downstage Gaming. I have been your host, Josh, and I will catch you all with our next game next time.